If, if I had to sum my dad's dream up in a single sentence, I think it would be to take a waste product um, that was a waste product and bad for the environment and turn it into something useful and better for the environment. He was passionate about farming in general. Uh, he actually wasn't that passionate about pig farming initially <laughs> when he first started it, having come from a cattle farm. But it certainly grew. He grew very passionate about pig farming and he was very passionate about efficiencies. And I think that was a lot of the drive. He loved nature. My dad was his happy place. Farmers live where they work. Their farms are their homes. Um, it's, they look after it like their homes. They look after the environment like their homes because there's no space for, for half measures and, and, and a non-caring attitude. The first conversation we had around wasted energy or energy uses, I think we were watching a very large felt fire in the flay. And he, and he seems to mention, sure, there's a lot of energy there. You know, imagine if you could use it kind of thing. And that sparked the sort of discussion. A biogas dam is simply the process of taking a waste product that has some usables left in it, so let's call them volatile solids. It just a process by which the bacteria can get at it, consume it, and release a byproduct that we can use, and that byproduct is methane-rich biogas. So we take methane and we convert it into carbon dioxide, and that is far less of a greenhouse gas than methane is. So if you think about dam, think of it as a covered swimming pool. Uh, so the dam is, is pretty deep, and it's got obviously a plastic lining and various safety features underneath, but also a cover over the top of it. And as the bacteria produce, gas, it'll slowly start to fill up, so it blows up a bit like a, like a balloon. So we'll suck the gas out from underneath the cover and we'll put it through a biological process by which we remove the H2S, which is hydrogen sulphide, and then through a dewatering system which removes the, the water vapor from the gas. And once we've dried it a little bit and we've taken the H2S out, we'll then compress it a very little bit and, and give it through to a petrol motor, which will run out excretions will fall, fall into a pit at the bottom of the building and then it's pumped into the dam. And the dam is designed so that you have a certain amount of hydraulic retention which gives the bacteria enough time to eat what's available in that waste. No, I guess not a perfect system. Anyone tells you there is a perfect system. The main problem with the first, with the first attempt uh, at the biogas project, and I call, call it an attempt even though it was mostly successful, we did produce a million kilowatt hours through the two turbines, was a technology supplier, wasn't really established in South Africa, so parts became a problem, um, support was a problem, and that's really what killed the project. So Jason was, at, was the head of the Biogas Association at the time, I think, um, and he heard about our project, um, and he came to see me and said, look, you know, I believe there's a problem with the project, do you want to try and salvage it? And I was like, not a chance. If anything's being imported, I'm, I'm just not interested. Um, and he wasn't pushy at all. He, he said, no problem, and off he went. And I needed a flare at some stage, and he helped me develop a local flare. Um, and through that process, Jason and I got to know each other. And at some stage, I, he said to me, do you want to try and develop something locally? And I said to him, okay, there's my budget. <laughs> Michael and his and his late father really really progressive in their view towards the the management side, especially the manure management side. I think they understood from very early on these sort of plants aren't plants that you just build and walk away from. They need to be managed, they need interventions, they've got to be looked after. I think I changed my mind because I think because of who Jason is, he's a hell of a passionate guy. He's really passionate about what he does. Um, he's very knowledgeable. Um, and I felt comfortable, I felt comfortable giving it another go with him. He's very much a modern day farmer. You know, understanding of, uh, of how his farm runs to the smallest detail is, is phenomenal. I, I do find him a, a, a real refreshing guy to, to be around.
If someone had to ask me, do you want to do a development project again? I'm not sure I'd say yes. It's been a, it's been a interesting road. It's been very, very interesting, but it's been a bumpy road. We are 85% there. Of our total 200 kilowatts electrical usage, 140 kilowatts is, is coming from the gas generator. I didn't originally plan to become a farmer. Um, my father got ill when I was about 20, I think it was. Initially, because my mom, I thought my mom needed a lot of help. Um, and the more, the longer I was here, the less I wanted to leave, I suppose. <laughs> I mean, you were always a farm boy. You, both you and Tracy were out at Oki's farm probably until seven o'clock at night. And we used to have to, how did dad call you again? He used to fire, he used to fire a shot. Fire, fire, he used to fire a shot <laughs> to get you guys to come home. He was sick for a long time. And um, my mom has supported my dad throughout his whole life, uh, but particularly when he was very, very sick. And then when Dad got really, really sick, you know, she did almost everything um, until I got here. So, probably the most important person on the farm. So it's a very fulfilling life. I, I, you know, I, if I had to redo my life, I'd probably skip the IT part. <laughs> Pig farmer. I'm a pig farmer that needs to make a plan though.